What is Steam Family Sharing, and how can it save you money? Steam Family Sharing's in the name. Steam Family Sharing has been a part of Steam since 2013. It's to my understanding that Steam is the only PC game launcher that has a family sharing feature. You can't do that with the Epic Game Store. It lets you share your Steam library with your family. You, the host, can share your Steam library with other people. You can authorize up to five different accounts on ten different devices. This is meant to be used with your family or people that you live with. Of course, you can use this to set up family sharing for PCs that aren't yours, even outside of your own house. That is, of course, as long as you're okay with the other party knowing your own Steam password. It's kind of like sharing your Netflix password, with a couple of different caveats. We'll get into those later. To get started, you'll need to log on to your Steam account on the PC you want to share with. Go into Settings, go to the Family tab, and press Authorize Library Sharing on this device. Now you've authorized family sharing on this device. Now log on to the other account you want to share with. If the host has installed any games on this PC, you should be able to see them. You're not done though. You'll want to select a game that's owned by the host. You'll then need a request to borrow it. The request will fail, but it'll tell you that the host needs to check their email. Within the email, there should be a button that says grant access to computer, yada, 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 whatever you named your computer. And now you'll see this message. Your device has been authorized, and now you've got access to their games. But how about we do this on the Steam Deck? The process is very similar. First, go into Settings. Second, go all the way down to the Family tab, and flip this switch here, Authorize Library Sharing on this device. Be sure to give access to eligible accounts, and now, switch. If this account was already authorized in the past, it won't send you another email. In fact, that one email was the only email you'll need for that one account. And there you go. Now you can play some games. Keep in mind though, there are some caveats. For example, let's say you're actually sharing a computer. Depending on the game, you'll see the host's save file. This could just be an isolated incident with Gunvolt 3. Of course, if you're not sharing the same physical PC, then this shouldn't be an issue. Of course, that's just a minor issue. But here are some other caveats. First is that not all Steam games can be family shared. This typically applies to free to play games, as it doesn't really make much sense to family share a free to play game. But at times, there are games that won't be family shared for a couple of different reasons. For example, games that you may have gotten for free through an in Steam promotion cannot be family shared. For example, I have here Acceleration of Siguri 2. The developer was giving away this game for free during the height of the pandemic. It's a pretty good game by the way, you should buy it. But in my specific case, I cannot family share this with anyone because I got this for free through Steam. But if you bought the game normally, then you'd be able to. If you go to the Manage Family Library Sharing page, you can see a list of games that your account cannot share. This limitation, however, doesn't apply to Steam gifts or games that you've gotten for free outside of Steam, for example, a code giveaway. The next caveat is you cannot share just DLC. Let's say for example you have two accounts with the same game, but one has DLC and the other doesn't. The DLC cannot be shared. Now if you didn't own the game at all, the DLC would also be shared alongside the base game. I'm not entirely sure why, but at this point you may as well just buy the DLC yourself. It'll probably be cheaper than the actual game itself. You also won't get any Steam trading cards. If you actually own the game in your account, you will get Steam trading cards just by playing the game. But if you borrow a game from a host, then you will not get trading cards from that game. And you may be asking why. It's simple really. It prevents people from infinitely farming trading cards. Next up is region restrictions. Sometimes games on Steam will have regional restrictions. For example, Super Robot Wars 5 is restricted to Japan and Southeast Asia. Like literally, you can't even look at the Steam page. If say for example, you made a Japanese Steam account and then you bought this game and tried to family share it with your American Steam account in America, you still would not be able to play Super Robot Wars 5. It's understandable why it's region locked. It's because of all the mecha series and all of the licensing issues. Thankfully, you can buy Super Robot Wars 30. The next major caveat has to do with VAC banning as well as, you know, cheating. If you family share a game that can issue VAC bans and the person borrowing your library cheats, Valve may issue you a VAC ban and take away your ability to share games. So be sure to only share with people that you trust. Furthermore, if you've been VAC banned, 
banned, you can't share games that you've been VAC banned in. And finally, 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 the big number one caveat, only one person may access a library at any time whether it be the host or the people you're sharing with. Entire libraries are lent out one at a time. So for example, let's say the host is playing game A and you want to play game B, a totally different game from their library. You cannot. Same deal with guests as well. If a guest is using someone else's library, you can't play any games from that library either. The same cannot be said about the library owner though. The host can always access their own games from their own library, whenever they want. If a guest is playing a game from your own library and you want to play a game, you can play it. The guest will be given a couple of minutes to either continue playing the game by buying it or quit the game while they're ahead. That said, there is a way to bypass this limitation. The guest would need to go into offline mode. Family sharing still works in offline mode. And to be honest, I don't know if there's a time limit. I don't know how long you can go offline for before you need to go online again to, well, essentially verify that those games have been shared with you. That said, there's your Steam family sharing guide. Remember, don't share passwords with strangers. They may steal your Steam account, so only share with people you trust, like family. And that about covers it for all of the issues with Steam family sharing that I know of. Like I said earlier, Steam is the only PC launcher that has family sharing as a feature. The closest you could get to this is just downloading games from itch.io or GOG. But consoles have had this feature for quite some time now, and there's a fundamental difference between the two. Consoles require that you register one particular console as the home console and anyone using that home console has full access to your console library. Outside of that home console though, you have to be signed into your account and online to access games on consoles other than your own. As I demonstrated earlier, this is not the case with Steam family sharing. However, there is one key difference. If someone's playing on your home console and you play on a different console that isn't your own, you can both access your own libraries on console. And heck, if you have a multiplayer game, you could share that multiplayer game and play together. And for a time, I thought consoles did it better. But honestly, I prefer the flexibility of being offline whenever I need to. And besides, it's not like family sharing is going to kill game sales. For starters, someone has to buy the game. For multiplayer games, each person has to buy their own copy anyways. And if they really want to get out of paying for games, I mean, they could just pirate instead. This right here is a way to combat piracy, a way to save your household a few bucks. And I won't say no to that. If you like this video, be sure to press the thumbs up button and spread the good gospel of high tech lowlife. And if you want to see more high tech lowlife, be sure to subscribe and press the bell icon for notifications. And for you enlightened individuals, be sure to join my discord server. And if you wish to support high tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description down below.